that's 427 p.m. Eastern Time here in the Boston area, that is, or wherever you may be around the world. We start promptly in just three minutes. Today's topic, profit trading on the side of banks and hedge funds with Melissa Armo. We'll start promptly in just three minutes. Thank you again, everyone, and welcome. Welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today. It's exactly 4.30 Eastern Time. We do want to welcome the new folks who's joined. Last person to join, uh, Thomas B., Christine, O.T., Charles W., Jimmy, and everyone. Please put your hands together and welcome our host. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Kathy, and everyone at OnlineTraderCentral.com. Welcome. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armel, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, LLC. Today I'm going to talk about profit trading on the side of banks and hedge funds. I trade. I'm a day trader. That's what I do. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to type them in the room as we go along. I'll see them as we go along. And you can always email me afterwards as well at melissa at the stockswish.com. And you can go to any one of my sites here, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Skype, and Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. I put a ton of videos on YouTube, so you could go there and subscribe. I do a lot of market calls as well, which I put on YouTube ahead of time. So let's get right started. I want to start today with a quote, and I like to be very motivational. As a person, as a, as a mentor, as a teacher, and as a trader myself, I motivate myself every morning when I trade. And I saw this quote and I thought, this is a really good one. We gain strength and courage and confidence by each experience in which we really stop to look fear in the face. We must do that which we think we cannot. And I thought this was a really good quote in reference to trading, specifically day trading. Because when you take a trade in the market, you are taking a risk. There's no way you can make money in the market without taking risk. And I find that a lot of people are afraid to take risk. And one of the reasons that people are afraid to take risk in the market is because they're so unsure of themselves. They're uncertain. There's an uncertainty, a level of uncertainty. They feel like 50-50 about the trades that they take. But the one thing we're going to talk about today 
And this permeates all of my teaching, specifically what we're going to discuss today in reference to money and banks and hedge funds and how they move stocks in the market, is that you need to have 100% conviction when you choose to take risk. When I take risk in a stock or a position, I never feel like 50-50. If I would feel like that, then I would feel like I would lose and I wouldn't take the trade. I wouldn't even risk a dollar, so I don't. It's not like some days I take a little teeny weeny size and then some days I take a really, really, really big size. No, I take risk in my positions when I believe that it will work and I take it without fear. And we're going to talk about that some more today. So open up your mind today to learn something new. That's what I want for you today. My desire for you today for the time that you spend here with me in the next hour is that you learn something. There's a takeaway for you here today. Ultimately, though, you want to be successful in the market. And one of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success is consistency. Without this, it is very hard to stay in the market for any length of time, no matter who you are. In order to be consistent, a person needs to focus on what counts and what ultimately counts and what can bring everlasting and consistent success. Well, this really requires a deeper understanding, a better comprehension, and an overall wider perspective of what makes individual success possible for a trader or investor in the market. So I don't care if you're a if you're a long-term investor, a core trader, a swing trader, this this webinar is still meaningful for you. But like I said, I'm a day trader. But let's talk about why do stocks move and what makes them move? What makes stocks move in the market? I don't know if you've ever really thought about this before, but this is what we're going to talk about today. It's money, and not just a small amount of money, it's really big money. So much money that you, it would be difficult for you to even conceive of it. Like if I said, picture a vault with $10 billion, you probably couldn't picture what $10 billion actually looks like. Maybe, maybe you could, but probably not. Okay, we'd all probably picture something. And then if we really went and looked at 10 million in a vault, it probably would look like way more than we any of us would even conceive because that's what big money looks like. It's like gigantic, okay? Now, what is big money? It's massive, huge amounts of money, so big you cannot even imagine it in your head. Becoming a successful trader and investor really requires becoming a specialist in defining where big banks and hedge funds are buying or selling a stock. And guess what? Those are the ones that have that kind of money, that big, 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 big money. Learning advanced technical analysis is an important part of this. What does this mean? It means really reading price action and charts, but reading it so specifically that you can pinpoint what that big money is going to do before it even does it. Comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. So elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of both hedge funds and banks trading in the market. Because that kind of big money is really what moves stocks in the market. You're reading the footprints of the big money. And how does it take hold? I have this picture here. There's a picture of a footprint. This could be a footprint of anything. But if we were looking at it in reference to a stock, it would be something that it would be doing in the price of the stock, which it would be doing in a gap. Now, I'm going to explain what a gap is in a minute. Now, what does big money look like? First, let's just look talk in general analysis here of the, of the overall picture of the chart. This is a day chart. It's a day chart of the QQQs ETFs, or what I call the market. I look at the QQQs and the SPY when I say the market. But just looking here at the QQQs, this is what big money looks like in reference to the overall market, which is an uptrend. So big money looks like it's in control here in the QQQs because it's not dropping, and it's in control to the upside. Meaning that the market, the overall market here, just looking in the last two months, is all I clipped here, is higher and it keeps getting bought. Now the green bars here depict buying. Today, even the market had a fantastic, jimongous, power trending day and the market gapped up. Now, I was just saying, how do you see this? Now, what do I mean by a gap? Let me just backtrack here. When the market closed on Friday, it closed here at a certain price. 106 or something, something, wherever it closed. Then this morning, it gapped up. All a gap is is when it opens at a different price in the morning at 9.30. So here's 4 o'clock on Friday, and here's 9.30 this morning. The market gapped up like 50 cents plus, 
Okay, so a gap up. So when you're reading this placement of the gap, and in the case here of today, this morning, the market gapped up. It could have been a gap down. Thursday into Friday, the market gapped down. Closed up here at 107 something and gapped down here to 10650 something, 10660 something on Friday. So from Thursday to Friday, the market gapped down. Then from Friday to Monday, the market gapped up. Now what does big money look like? You see here the control. The control is to the upside of the buying in the QQQ specifically. The key to profits is really to trade with the big money, whether it's up or down. We're going to look at this chart a little bit more later too. This is AXP American Express. This is a 15 minute. Now we're on a 15 minute down here. This isn't the daily. But last week, American Express closed on Thursday night around $80 and some cents. And then in the morning at 9.30 when it opened, it opened around 78 something. So this was another gap that happened. And in this case, it was a gap down. And do you see this is the move then that the stock made? Okay. So how did this stock go like this? It dropped in here $2 plus into the open. This is big money, which is selling the stock. Okay, so if you were a trader, if you were shorting this, you would make money. If you were buying this, you would have lost. What you need to figure out is what is the big money going to do with this when it opens? Are they going to buy it or are they going to sell it? Okay, it's about money that's committed. Big money is committed because the position sizes that are taken are often huge. Okay, it's not like they happen small. Scott is asking about earnings. AXP was an earnings gap. Yes. The market doesn't have earnings and it gapped up and it gapped down Friday morning. So gaps can happen for lots and lots of reasons. Earnings could be one of the reasons that was the AXP reason. There might have been other reasons too. There are many, many reasons for stocks to gap, not just earnings, just so you know. Okay. All right, getting back to this. It's about money that is committed. It's committed to the position in that stock specifically or the market. And it's about money that's in control. Again, I'm talking about the big money. Here I depicted the QQQs. This is the overall market going back from the beginning of 2012. Okay, we have January 2012. You can see the price point here of around where the QQQs sat. We have doubled in price since then. It is 2015. It is April 2015. So we're going back three years plus. The, the QQQs have more than doubled in price. So you can see here that the big money is in control of the market. It is getting bought. Do you see this? Okay. So that the control, the, the control, what side of the control is, the side of the control is into the bulls in the QQQs here. This is very obvious. Okay, this is so obvious that if I quizzed every one of you, if you didn't even know a thing about gaps or anything I trade, I would hope that you would say yes to that question, that the bulls are in control. Commitment has a plan of action because the level of money is massive. And I will tell you that as much as you don't like to lose, banks and hedge funds like to lose even less than you like to lose. Okay? Because if a bank takes a position and is wrong and, and it ends up being a loss, it could be destructive, okay? It could be very painful, way more painful than a loss would be for you in one trade, okay? So as much as you don't like to be wrong when you take something or lose in a trade, banks and hedge funds really don't like to be wrong because it is extremely costly and sometimes it can be... Uh, devastating. Okay. So commitment has a plan of action to warrant mistakes not happening that are that costly or destructive because the size of the money in the positions is huge. Okay. Now positions can be taken in what way? Stocks can be bought or hedge funds and banks also can take short positions in stocks of the market or stocks or hedge funds can be long positions and sell them. Okay, all of those things can be done. 
So it is about a level of commitment. And sometimes, as I was saying here in reference to the market, and I'm showing here a picture of Netflix. Netflix had earnings last week. We will talk about this chart here in a minute too. Sometimes the commitment from banks and hedge funds in stocks or the market is not temporary. Sometimes it's long lasting, like you could take a train that could be a long-term swinger core trade that could last for months or weeks or years and be an enormous, enormous position for you if you're willing to stay with it. Now, in the case of Netflix, Netflix was in a downtrend for uh, about two years or something like that, or maybe it wasn't even two years, and it did a correction here back at the beginning of 2013. Price of the gap of this, the stock gapped up, closed the night before here, gapped up, gapped up overnight, huge, beautiful, fabulous gap that a lot of people wanted to short that were traders because the size of the gap was big. But as it turns out, the gap held as a bullish gap. The stock got bought, and if you bought this here around a hundred and some dollars, and you were still in this position, if you were still in it long term today, you were never down in the position if you bought this, and the stock had earnings last week, and is going to 600. I mean, it got to the dream target last week of 565, 575, 75, and it was a beautiful, beautiful long, but the stock has gone more than $400 in two years. So if you only had a hundred shares, if you only had 100 shares of Netflix, and I'm just saying if you took the position in 2013, if you knew how to do what I do, and you bought 100 shares of that, and you held it, you were never down in the position, you would have made over $40,000 from then until last week. That is one example of control that can make you a lot of money as one person, as one individual in the market. Because actually 100 shares of Netflix, if you had bought it at around 140 bucks or whatever, it's completely doable. I mean, that's, it, wasn't that, it wasn't like you were buying it at a strike price of 500 like last week, which actually is still doable for many traders. But back here, if you had bought it here and been in the trade for two years, which is not that long of a time, you would have made over 40 grand with 100 shares. And if you had 200 shares, you would have made over 80. That's more money than people would make in most of their 401ks with a 100 share position of anything. That's more money than many traders make even taking swing trades on any given year, let alone in, in, in two years. That's more money than day traders even make in, a, in 12, 24 months of time because most day traders, guess what? They lose. And why do they lose? Because they don't have a strategy to trade, are unsure of the direction, and can't take risk. Was there risk pertaining to this Netflix if you bought it back in January of 2013? Yes. Yes, there was. There was a risk involved. The stock could have continued in the downtrend. But if you rated the gap per my system, which I'm going to discuss a little bit here, you would have known that that gap actually was a long and would have held. And I called it to happen. You can go back on YouTube, actually, and watch our video from two years ago. So the thing is that why did that happen? How did that happen? Is it possible? Are there other things like that to set up in the market? Are there other opportunities that could possibly happen for you? Yes, but you have to understand what you're looking at. And more than that, you have to be able to have conviction to take the trade so that you can make that kind of money. It's reading the footprints that Netflix is big money. And they bought it up last week too, which I'm going to show you that chart. I'm going to blow it up. But if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction, and then you get out after the move happens for profit, or if it's continuing, you stay in it. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of power, and you need to know how to find it, because there's so many stocks in the stock market. And I trade in the NASDAQ and the New York Exchange, and there's so many stocks out there, but many of them are playable in any given day. It is very important to find this power, because the power has the ability to pay you. And that's how the market has the ability to pay you. And actually, it's the only way you're going to make any money. The only, the only way you're going to make any money is by seeing this and doing it and taking the trades. And you've got to take risks to do that. And you have to know what to look for. Knowing what to read, what banks and hedge funds are controlling, and how they're controlling it, meaning are they buying it or selling it, is essential to becoming a successful trader. And you can win really big on the trading on the side of power, not just as a day trade, but even long term, like I just showed with the Netflix. 
The important thing to understand is that hedge funds and banks are in charge all the time. The market gapped down on Friday. Gapped down on Friday and sold off. And you know what? I looked at that and I said, whatever. I didn't call the market as a short in the room for sure, but I did say we'd fall in the day, but I knew that we'd hold. And guess what? This morning, the market gapped up and ran and ran all day and power trending and got bought. Why? How is that possible? Here's today's chart because banks and hedge funds are in charge all the time, even though the market gapped down on Friday. Even though people see the lower highs and lower lows that are happening and the double, triple top in here and the gap down from Friday and the huge sell up that happened in the live day. If you day traded Friday, the market was red. And you made money short if you shorted the SPY or the QQQs on Friday, but that is not anything that is taking hold of this market. That is not who's in control. It is what is called temporary control. And this is very important. And this is something that traders struggle with, and I don't know why, but it is temporary control versus real control, okay? It is all about perception. It's like what you are looking at and somebody else is looking at in their mind. Are you seeing the same thing? I looked at the market on Friday. I said, oh, eh, this is nothing. We're going to fall today, but this isn't, this isn't really going anywhere. And I didn't call the market short, okay? Even though I said it would fall in the day. It's about perception, okay? Yet, many, many people got very excited about the market falling on Friday and wanted to short and took overnight shorts. And guess what? That helped the market gap up this morning because people shorted the market overnight from Friday. But those that are in control, the people that are in charge, the hedge funds and banks that are in control of this market bought it up on through after the drop down from Friday and you say well then how did the market fall on Friday and how did it drop like that and why is it making lower highs and lower lows because you always have the back and forth of sometimes the people that are in the temporary control but you can't make money trading with temporary control you can only make money trading with full control or real control, which is only who's controlling what the stock is doing on any given day, which is the hedge funds and banks that are controlling it. Like, who has control? Now, I'm looking here at this. This is a SPY again. Okay, this is the market ETF for the SPY. During the month of January, the market appeared to be almost kind of bearish. Now, I call this neutral, neutral slash bullish. Market was still in an uptrend, but many, many people were reading this by as bearish. Why? There was 7,000 red bars in here in this month. And I'm not going to argue with you that there was lots and lots of red in the market in the month of January. You could have shorted the market a lot of days in here and probably been profitable. I didn't do that, but people did. This is where you have a temporary control Temporary meaning not just on the day here, or this day, or this day, or this day, but you actually have temporary control going on for a few weeks, okay? But lo and behold, look what happened. In the month of February, the market continued and rallied and rallied over itself, and has rallied and rallied and rallied even today. And we will make a new high in the market, and it's probably going to happen this week. I would be shocked if it doesn't happen this week, and it will definitely happen before the end of the month. So do you see here, this is, the, again, the temporary control. So the temporary control could even last longer than a day. It could last for weeks. But the real control, the full control, is showing its hand again today, did then also the month of February. And it's there. It's there. I'm reading it. Okay? So you have to look at, really, who has the control, who has the real control. Here's the market today. Power trended all day. So I have a method. It is a 26-point reading system that tells you how to read this control. And by reading the control, you can make money. Because you won't consistently make money if you're not with the control. With who's really controlling it. And your trades will be choppy and your results will be choppy. You have to train with the side of the real control, which is of the big money. You've got to spot it. So I have a method that spots the control of banks and hedge funds taking positions in and out of the market. Now, in reference to Netflix, they were taking a position in Netflix, which I read. Happened again last week. 
more buying came in in Netflix. Again, we're going to talk about that chart in a minute. But the method that I created is called Golden Gaps. Now, I explained to you what a gap is. I'm going to go over it again. But I named my system Golden Gaps because it's like finding gold in the market because it pinpoints correctly institutional direction. And by institutional direction, I mean banks and hedge funds and big money in the market. And it sets up daily. That's the one nice thing. You get it constantly throughout the month. It's not like this is something that happens once a year. You constantly have banks and hedge funds in and out of stuff every day. So again, it's in the gap, the gap itself. Now, how does it work? You're looking for golden gaps. It is a gap that ha it has a selling action or a buying action that is happening by banks or hedge funds in the market that is creating a move that will follow through in the stock to pay you in the direction of the gap. So it's really, I'm reading the price action in the gap. Now I talked earlier about advanced technical analysis. This is where the technical analysis part comes into play. You're gonna use the daily chart looking at the candlesticks and reading the price action to see how it's setting up, to clearly read the gap, to see if this is actually something that's real that will sell off or get bought. It is a very, very powerful way to enter a trade, to take a trade, and to have a big move in the stock. Golden gaps have huge opportunity because they spot big money, and that is really the way that one person can make money in the market. There's really only one thing that can move stocks, and it's not a little bit of money. As I was saying, it's called big money. It's in charge. It's in charge all the time. Even if you think it's not, it's there if you read the gaps correctly. And the amazing thing is that negative traders and analysts talk about power money people or hedge funds or banks, they're really the reason that we can be successful in the market. It would be incredibly difficult for you or me to make money if hedge funds and banks didn't participate in the market in such a big, big way and on a daily basis. We'd be, we'd be trying to look for stuff and be, be trading penny stocks. We'd be, I'd be pulling my hair out if I was looking to do anything other than what I'm doing now. It wouldn't be any fun because you wouldn't get the play on through. You wouldn't get the big moves. You wouldn't get the momentum like I'm going to show you in some of these trades here. And momentum is fun and making money is fun. And when it works and goes to the dream target, it's really fun. Now, Netflix just happened to be one of those gaps that is such a great example here of what I'm talking about that I'm going to define it for you in layman's terms because the stock the night before closed around 470 something, 475 ish, okay, at four o'clock Eastern time. The earnings reported, and in within five minutes, the stock literally rallied up $52 overnight. Now, you could you could have traded this after hours. Okay, I did not. But you could wait until the next day and see what it does. It held the gap up into the next morning. This is 9.30 Eastern time, and the stock opened. The stock on the live day rallied up almost, well, almost $40 on the live day. So from the close at 4 o'clock on this night here until the next day, the stock made almost a 100-point move. It was $92 plus. There's nothing that can do that but banks or hedge funds. No number of traders can possibly make Netflix go like that. And forget about the price point for a second, even though that was, it's a large price point. Okay, so all of that aside, pretend that was, pretend this isn't a cheap stock. It's, it's neither here nor there. It's the point. It's the very idea that this is so, such massive of a move that there's, this couldn't have done that. It held in the sky, $52 up in a gap, and a $40 plus move. And that is an example of big money. Money, again, that you can't even conceive of if you looked at it physically. Okay, Stock even continued the next day. And it's, it's even continuing. It's going higher. But I wouldn't buy right this second now. But it was a great buy last week. And in the longer term, this chart is higher. How is it possible? Again, big money. Now, if you knew my method to rate the gap, using the 26-point method to rate the gap to determine what it's doing on the live day, if you want to take a position in Netflix, you might have thought it was a short because it gapped up $52 overnight. And a lot of traders, when they see a gap like that, where the stock closes the night before at 4 o'clock down here at 475 and gaps up $52 overnight, they want to short it. They want to sell it. They want to do what's called a fade in the gap. That was not the right play here. How did I know? You rate the gap. You rate the gap, and it was a long, 
It was a great long even. The trade in Netflix, if you went long this stock, and I'm giving two examples here. One is an intermediate risk and one is an advanced risk. The stock was actually $4. If you took 100 shares, you would have risked $400 in this. This is not the high of the day, not even close. The stock ran $20 from past this price. In fact, I'm just, I'm just going over the morning trade here. I'm going to go back in a minute. If you exited in the morning move, up into 550 really was the target first target you were looking for. It almost got to this initially. It did get over that. But you would have gotten out here, and I'll go back and show you why. 546, you would have made $1,250. That's $1,250 and a $400 risk. The risk to reward is 3.125 times the amount risk was made in profit. This is a great risk to reward trade, and this is a real amount of money, and you would have made it in a very quick time. Now let's go back. Here's the entry. You would have gone long Netflix. Here's where you would have put in a stop. This is a one minute chart. This is 930. Now you could have rounded this up and taken out half here, but here's the exit here into the morning time. Now the stock, like I showed you here, ran all day and actually ran over $20 past the exit at 546. So let's just say you believed that Netflix was going to the dream target and you actually bought the stock here at 533.50, which was the morning move on this, okay? The dream target of the stock on the day I said was 565.65. If you held it to 565, it went there. You, if you took 100 shares, a $400 risk, okay, you could have made over $3,000, but you would have had to be in it all day. The morning move, the morning trade was 1200 bucks. You had to risk $400. This is an intermediate risk, okay? That is an incredible amount of money to make in a fast period of time. You made this money in 30 minutes. This is not holding the trade all day. If you held it all day, you made three times that much. You made over three grand. This is just holding the stock for less than 30 minutes. One of the reasons that my method is so appealing to people is because I only trade the morning for the most part. Every once in a blue moon, I will trade into the afternoon, but that's very rare. I might do it twice a month if that. But one of the reasons why people love my strategy is not just the momentum that the stocks have, but the fast plays that they have in the morning. And if they don't set up in the morning, then I don't do them. I don't do them at all. I pass. I don't do anything that day. Stocks make their moves in the morning because banks and hedge funds put the positions on and have their plan of action to put the position on into the open, whatever they're doing, whether it's selling it or shorting it or buying it. So my method works very well for people because you don't have to sit and trade all day to 4 o'clock. And I find that many, many people, when they're sitting and trading all day to 4 o'clock, actually give money back. They make money in the morning and give it back in the afternoon. It's not the right way to trade. You have a goal when you're a day trader and you trade and you just take it and you take it for the move and you get out. And you could have done that here with the Netflix. But like I said, if you held it all day, it actually went $20 past that first initial target number. Does anyone have any questions about Netflix or anything at all so far? Let me know. Let me know as I'm going along here. So again, this was a day trade, okay? Now, if you took an advanced risk of Netflix, same exact trade, if you took 200 shares. If you could afford to take 200 shares, it's an $800 risk. Exact same trade, stops the same entries, the same exits, the same 546, you could have made $2,500. Same trade, 3.125 risk to reward, and you made this within 30 minutes. That means for every dollar you risk, you made $3.12. Day trading is not about percentages. It is about how much money are you risking and how much are you looking to make. In other words, if you risk 10 pennies and you make 30 pennies, that means that's a three risk unit. That's a great trade. That means for if you risk a dollar and you make three dollars, that's what this trade is exemplifying here. A lot of people don't understand that about day trading, but it is not about percentages. And actually, if you look at percentages, the percentages are huge or massive, but the right way to really look at it is for every dollar you risk, you're looking to make three, two in the low end. Could make five, six, or more in the high end, and you have to hold it to the target, though. Netflix was a huge risk reward trade if you held it to the target. It was almost 10 Rs. Now, getting back to what I was saying, how do you find these picks? How do you find these? I use a checklist. 
The checklist tells me what to look for in the price of the stock. It tells me in the morning before the open. And you can find them at night, like Netflix happened at night. You could have looked for that one at night to see what it was doing. Golden gaps are a secret ingredient that are in charts because they demonstrate an event that's happening. It is a price event. It's a price event that is being created by big money. Whether it happens to the downside or the upside or either direction, you're trying to figure out when you see the gap in the chart if it's going to follow through in the gap or flip, for example. Okay? And the great thing is that they happen on a regular basis, meaning you look for them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The most important gaps are ones that signify, though, a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction, which, which is what Netflix was, actually. And you've got to understand which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market that will help, help you decide what to do and when a change is occurring. A great example of this is the market, the market gap down Friday. But it was not a gap that was meaningful. Then the market gapped up today. That was meaningful. And you could have gone long the market today. So how do you know which gaps are meaningful and which ones are not? And how do you know which gaps are made by the power of money, the big money, the banks, the hedge funds are not? Again, using the checklist. This checklist helps you keep your discipline. It tells you what to do. So you don't have to be stressed out to decide. Many people get up in the morning and they are totally stressed out. They don't know what stock to trade, whether they should go long or short, where they should take it, what time they should take it, what they should do with it. Having this checklist is like your trading plan. It takes away all that stress for you. All you do is rate the stock, and that tells you whether or not you can take it long or short, or whether or not you can't take it long or short at all, and you can't do anything with it. It takes away the stress, and it forces you to be disciplined. It's about using common sense of where to put your money. And it, common sense, common sense tells you you want to be with the big money. Common sense tells you don't want to be against the big money. Common sense tells you don't want to play something that doesn't have any money in it. Stocks that are too thin don't move, aren't going anywhere, have no money in them. Okay. Common sense says put your money at work for you to utilize it to be effective and efficient. And the efficiency happens in the time frame. If someone said to you, would you rather invest your money in something that's going to pay three pennies or would you rather invest your money in something that's going to pay 30 pennies? You'd say 30 pennies. That's a better investment. Okay. Common sense is you want to be in stuff that moves. So you've got to use the 26-point checklist to guide you. The checklist doesn't work for you. It takes away the emotions so you don't make mistakes. Many, many people struggle with trading because their emotions are all over the place. Like I said earlier today, people are stressed out. They are in fear. They're unsure of themselves. They feel 50-50. That's why they make mistakes. The uncertainty, the fear issue, and then they make mistakes. So I, I teach a class. In the class, I teach the rating system. It pinpoints the direction of control by trading where the banks and hedge funds are putting their money and reading the price. You are looking at the gap, and then you are rating the gap with a 26-point rating system, and then you're determining whether you can short or buy AXP. Aquaview is asking me a question. I teach the 26 points in my class, which I will talk about at the end of the webinar. Now let's look at AXP. AXP Close the night before up here around $80 and some cents. Gap down here at around $78. This is at 9.30 in the morning. So this is at 4 o'clock, and now here we are at 9.30 in the morning. Now, what do you do with this? You rate it with the checklist. You don't have to stress yourself out. If you're not sure if it's a long or a short, you will rate it. And then you'll know it's a long or a short. And you don't have to be in fear. And then you take it when it opens, if it rates well enough to do it. Now, it may not do anything, and then you don't play it, okay? But at least you have the checklist to tell you, to help you know what to do with it, so you don't have to be stressed out or make an emotional decision. Now, here is AXP then, what did it do into the open? Now we're on a one minute chart. Stock closes the night before here, gaps down, drops, rallies, Drops again, rallies, drops, falls. Do you see here, this is 9.30 a.m. 
Where did the stock drop into? This actually ended up being the low of the day, right in here at 955. This is what I call the money move in the stock. This is big money. What are they doing in AXP? They sold out of it. They sold out of it here into the live day from 9.30 into 10 o'clock. If you knew that this would happen, you could short the stock and you would make money on this move. The price of the entry, and I'll go back and show you a minute, was 78.05. This is a really good risk on this, 20 cents. Now, this is an advanced risk again. You would be risking $800 if you were an advanced trader. Dropped more than a dollar, but you probably would have gotten out here at the target 77. Total profits 4,200, that's $4,200. Risk to reward is 5.25. What does that mean? For every dollar you risked, you made $5.25, and you made it in 10 minutes. This is phenomenal. Now, yes, you did have to risk $800 on this if you wanted to do advance to make 4,000, but I'm gonna show you two other examples where you didn't have to take this much risk. Same trade. You shorted the stock here. Stop over this green bar. Here's the drop. It actually went past it. It actually went 50 cents more under 77 into the bounce. But 77 was a target. And so you were up a lot of money and the right thing to do was to get out. How would you have known how to do this? This falls out of the sky. If you were waiting for after 10 o'clock for the stock to set a trend in the day intraday, you missed the whole trade. This never set up right as a short the rest of the day. You never made money in this as a short the rest of the day. Even though the stock closed right under the day, there was no short setup in the stock anywhere else in the day, and you couldn't have gone long it. And if you would have gone long, you would have lost. This was not a long. This was a short. Big money sold AXP on the day. Into the open, and the move was to the downside to get paid. And it happened in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. Okay? And actually moved to $1.50. But again, exit was 77 now, if you took a beginner risk, you only wanted to risk $100, fine. It still moved huge, okay? You could have taken 500 shares of this. 500 shares of this, you would have made $525. That's a beautiful trade. Again, for every dollar you risk, you made $5.25. It's not about the share size as far as the risk reward. It's about the entry and the exit, and not only that, the pick. The pick and knowing what to pick and the direction to pick it, knowing that AXP would be a short, not a long. Because if you thought it was a long, you would have lost in the trade and you would have never even gotten the short because it didn't set up again as a short. So this is where the 26 points tells you way before the stock even opens before 930 that this is okay to short and that you want to short it and you don't want to buy it. Okay? Now you could have been in an intermediate risk. 250 is an intermediate risk, $250. You could have taken 2,500 shares of this or thereabout, okay? If you wanted to take 2,500, actually, this is a $500 risk. I'm sorry. I, I put 2,500 shares out. It actually would have been a $500 risk, not 250. <laughs> this number is wrong here. I wanted to say 500 bucks, just so you know. 2,500 shares is a $500 risk. But if you risked 2,500 shares and a $500 risk, you would have made 26.25. So how I divvy up risk is, like let's just say if you're new, you have a small buying power, small account, okay? I tell people to risk $50, $75, $100 on the low and beginner. Intermediate, you can risk anywhere from 250 up to four or five hundred. Anything over five hundred dollars is an advanced risk, meaning that you don't want to take that risk unless you're trading for a few weeks or months and you know how to trade. But the point is that even if you took the beginner risk of a hundred bucks, you would have made five hundred some dollars. Okay. Five hundred dollars a day day trading is twenty five hundred dollars a week. And $2,500 a week is ten grand a month. Now, will you get a 5R trade on every trade? No. No, you won't. Some you will. Some you'll get more. Some you'll only make two risk units. Some days you'll risk $100 and only make $200. Okay? But the idea is knowing how to take the setup, which is the same no matter what your risk is, knowing what the directional bias is, that AXP was a short, and also knowing where the target is to get out. Okay, and what tells you you can do it, the gap 
and the rating of the gap, that it's going to tell you what big money's going to do. Because you can't make any money unless you've got the big money with you. Because that's what makes a stock drop $2. Big money sold out of the stock on the day, and that's what made it drop more than $2. Okay. And again, this goes back to playing with the banks and hedge funds. Because that's how you're going to make money. And not only that, it's how you make it quick. Quick, 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 quick. In a few minutes, or within a half an hour. It's all about having the conviction. I don't want to risk pennies if I don't have conviction. I'll risk a lot of money if I have conviction in something. Whether the stock price point is, is uh, something like AXP or Netflix or something that's even a, a cheaper stock. It's about the amount of money of the risk that you're taking in the position size. It is really all about who has control. JPM had a gap that happened last week. The stock had earnings and it gapped up. Here was the day of the earnings. This was last week. It was a bullish gap. It had a beautiful bullish move here in the morning and then it followed through on the live day then on the second day after the gap. Again, the conviction, the conviction to tell you that you could buy the stock, that even though it's up seven days here in a row, that you can buy the gap up. The stock was just rallying for seven days straight and gapped up and many traders might have thought it would sell off because it, it's been running for seven days. But guess what? Per the rating system, it was a long and it held as a long. And the right thing to do was to buy it after you rate it, if it rates well, which you did. And if you went long and you made money and if you went long in here, you made money. It's about having the conviction to know what to do. And if you don't understand how to read this, you might think this is going to sell off because it's run up for seven days straight. Longer than that here, actually. Okay. It's very easy to press the button once you have conviction. It is very hard to press it if you don't. It's nearly impossible to make money in the market if you don't have conviction. But it is very easy to make money if you do have conviction. So you have to learn what conviction is. And if you don't have any conviction at all in what you're doing, you should just stop. Because chances are you'll lose because you cannot make money consistently in the market unless you actually believe it's going to work. And what do I mean by conviction? Conviction means it's a belief. It's a strong belief. You believe that it's going to work. The stock's going to work in the direction that you take the position. You believe that if you risk this much money, you're going to make this much. It's not about like you're going to the casino. It's about you're doing it because you think there's going to be a payoff. There has to be a payoff. There always must be a payoff. You want to pay off if you take a trade, you want to get paid. You want to pay off if you take my class, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, that you want to be able to learn that information to make money. Everyone wants a payoff in the market. That's the reason that you're doing it. If you don't believe you will have one, don't take the risk because chances are that it won't work out. You have to understand what this is. This idea of conviction. And you need conviction to take the risk. Ultimately, is about trading on the side of hedge funds, though, and banks in the market, because this is what gives me the conviction. You want to know what gives me the conviction to take risk in stocks? You want to know I can call something like Netflix and can rally up and gap up $52 overnight and still call it to get to all-time highs and to go to 565 Because I have conviction. I have conviction that stock was being bought by hedge funds and banks. I read it in the gap. And I called it in the gap when I called it two years ago. And I called it even the gap before it even gapped. I called that stock before it even had the earnings to gap up over 500. That's how much conviction that I had that that stock would be bought. And that is not the rating system at all. That is me being able to have seven years of experience trading, reading money in the market, reading real, real big money in the market, which is hedge funds and banks. And this is a skill. It is a skill that if you learn how to do it, you will have the skill and you will have it for the rest of your life. And no one will ever be able to take it from you. And you'll be able to actually make money in the market. And then you're really going to have conviction. And you'll be able to see how much money you could really make doing this thing. This thing that you might have been trying to do for years and failed at and could never do right and are losing and didn't have conviction in anything, including the market or yourself. You will regain that passion. I will reignite that in you once you understand why I'm saying these things and how often they work. But until you understand it, you won't make money. And you certainly won't have conviction if you don't understand it. You've got to learn a method that gives you an edge. Earning power, really, and knowing how to earn money counts. And in fact, it counts more so than what you have. In other words, if you say to me, I have this much money to make money in the market. I've got $100,000 to do it. Okay, great. But you know what? If I had somebody that had $5,000 and knew what I knew, I'd bet on that person over the person who has hundred grand. Because the person that knows what to do with less will make it. 
And the one with a lot will lose everything he's got and more because he has no idea what to do. It is not about how much you have. It is about what you know. And you can take a small amount of money and turn it into a lot if you know what to do. You can have all the money in the world, and if you don't know what to do with it, you'll lose. This is why a lot of rich people take their money and they send them to stockbrokers, and the stockbrokers don't know how to trade, and they lose their money, and then they wonder why. you got to be in control of your own positions, even if you have someone else managing them. To understand the person that you have that is managing your money knows what to do, or they'll lose it. Okay? It is so important to know what to do. And to have conviction in such in your investments, whether the long term or for the short term. And you will sleep better at night if you have conviction. You will be less stressed when you trade. You will not feel the need to be undisciplined. You will know that such and such a trade is not a good one. And you won't get sucked into doing it. And then you won't take a trade maybe that day or do anything if you don't like anything. And you won't be stressed out about it. Or you will take a trade and you will keep the conviction and hold the conviction even if it hasn't broken yet or run yet or worked yet. And you've been in it for six minutes and you're waiting for it to go and it's sitting at your price or it may have been backed up and you might be a teeny weeny bit down. And then it goes to work and falls off a planet and runs and drops $3 and you're up thousands of dollars. And if you had killed it and lost the conviction then you wouldn't have been up the money. That happens all the time, okay? Having conviction allows you to profit in the market. I teach a class on my method. It's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock of the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on a very, very advanced level. It teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and big money and charts. I teach the entries. I teach the targets. I teach how to what stock to pick each day, what direction to trade it. I teach support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. And I teach a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. It is a trading strategy that is adaptable for your trading and, and your life. And you can trade gaps from home and you can work for yourself. Trading really is about chunking it out. Okay? It is about chunking it out. Is it about income generation? You are going in every day looking for a good trade and making the money and you're taking it out and you're booking it and you're done. And I usually like to do that quickly, quickly in the morning. You've got to have, though, what I call 100% conviction. There is nothing else. If it's not 100%, then it's none. Then you have no conviction. There's no maybe. I have 100% conviction or I don't have any. That's why I say 100%. I have 100% conviction it's going to work. Boom. That's it. I have 100% conviction the market is higher. We'll make a new high before May 1st. I have 100% conviction that will happen. Not maybe, not kind of, not 50% conviction. I have 100% conviction the market will run bullish all of the year 2015 and we'll make a new high in the next two weeks. Come back and see me and email me on May 1st or December 31st. The market will be bullish all year. It's 100% conviction. You've got to know what this feels like. Once you know, you will feel like you can risk money in the market. Not just $100, but $1,000 or $1,500 like I have in some of my trades. You will be able to press the button on a one-minute chart and risk $1,000. And let me tell you something. When you got the guts to do that, you got the guts to trade. And you got the guts to do this thing. You got the guts to make money. And everybody comes to me and they say, oh, I've been trading for 20 years. And oh, I've been trading for 30 years. And oh, I've been doing this and I've been doing that. And I don't have any fear. And I know how to trade. Yeah, right. You take and trade a stock and enter that stock within 60 seconds of trading and risk $1,500 like I do, then I tell you that is guts. That is guts, my people, and that is conviction, and I do it. I do it, and I put in a stop, and the stop holds. That's how you make money, though. That's how you do it. That's how you're making thousands of dollars a trade and thousands of dollars a week and thousands of dollars a month and thousands of dollars a year, and that's how you get to the point where you can make over a million dollars a year trading. And you want to be on that path, you got to learn what it feels like. And the only way to do that is from knowing. And whether you have $1 left in your name in your trading account or 100 grand, I don't care. You will never make any money if you don't know what to do. And it's from the hedge funds and the banks who control the market. They control it. They control everything. They control the whole thing. But you can read it. And that's the great thing. You can read it in gaps. So empower yourself to trade the market. I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. That is the class I'm teaching this weekend. 
Retakes are free if you sign up for once. You can retake it anytime in the future for free. The class is also online. The class is this weekend, April 25th and 26th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $34.99. If you're interested in signing up, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Kathy can put my information there back again in the room. I'm offering for free the Wealth Manifestation course for this class. For anyone that takes a class this weekend, I'm offering this class free. It's normally $400, $399. And I'm doing this because it's a good time of the year. It's earnings season, it's second quarter. This class really gives you the motivation, the direction that you need to go and make the money that is going to be possible to make in April and May in the market in this earnings season period. So I'm offering this free to anyone that does the class this weekend. Any new signups, you're saving $400. And this is a really great class. It's not about charts. It's about manifesting wealth in your trading and your life. Okay, so that is a great course. If you sign up this weekend, you get it for free. Now, I'm doing an earnings season special. Okay, I teach another class. This is brand new. It is a bullish gap class for those of you that love the Netflix, Disney, JPM, the market calls I've made. I'm teaching a bullish class too. If you want to sign up for both, the gap class, which is this weekend, 25th and 26th, the bearish class, and the bullish class, if you do either one on their own, they're $34.99. If you do the bearish class, it's $34.99. If you do the bullish class, you can do that class, it's $34.99. But if you want to pay for them both at once, I'm doing a special. You could do both classes and save almost $2,000. So if you know you want to learn how to do the shorts and the longs, and you want to do it all at once, you can do both classes in the next month and learn how to short and how to go long, how to rate the bullish gaps, how to rate the bearish gaps. They are different, and you will save almost $2,000. You could take both classes. You pay for them, sign up for them both at once. This is the earnings season special for $49.99. And you get the wealth class free as well. The last thing I just want to close with is to tell you that you can do it. Success is within your grasp. I am a normal person, okay? I'm a normal, regular woman. I happen to be very intelligent, okay, but many of you are too. I taught myself with my own live money to trade the market, and it took me a few years to figure it out, but I did, and now I'm teaching people how to do it in my classes, and they're successful and are doing it. So this is something that is within your grasp. It is about you. This is not about me. This is about you. I teach you how to do it. What if I go on and I start my own hedge fund? You, you need to know how to do it yourself, okay? I, I am investing my time in teaching you in the class to do it, and that's why I charge for the information because it's good, it's high-quality information, and it's something you can use for the rest of your life. It's something that you can use for the rest of your life because as long as the U.S. stock market exists, it will always have a time close and an end close and an open. The market will never have a 24-hour period like the Forex market. It is a controlled environment. It will always be a controlled environment in that method. And as a result of that, there will always be gaps to trade. Companies are things that people have emotions around, whether it's Apple or Netflix or the banks, okay? And people love to buy them and sell them. But you have to read what is going to happen to it before it does it. Otherwise, you don't make any money. Because after the fact, like you saw in the AXP and even in the Netflix, even in the Netflix after the fact, it's too late. It's too late, okay? You can't be asleep at the wheel when you trade. You've got to know what you're doing. And I have it all figured out in the morning before the open, before 930. So thank you for coming, everyone. We have a few minutes here. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions at all? Thank you, Alec. Any questions at all from anyone whatsoever about any topic here? i got a couple minutes left. If you would like a trial of the live training room, you can email me. You can trial the room this week before the class if you want to see me trade live, see what we get this week. I would suggest you observe, not take the calls because they set up quickly until you learn. You must take the class to join my live training room because I think it's important for people to learn how to trade before they do it. Although I have had people that are experienced traders that have trialed the room, taken trades, and made the money for the class in the trial, and then taken the class and then joined the room. So it is up to you, but 
I'm certainly welcome to send anyone a trial that wants to observe me trading this week. There's going to be a lot of stuff this week. I haven't looked at anything yet tonight, but I know the market's going to make a new high in the next two weeks. Does anyone have any questions about anything at all? Here's my email again. Think about what I said today. I'll leave you with one more thought. Oops, I don't know why that does that. If you are trading right now, I want you to think in your head. You can go think in your own or write it in a journal or your notepad next to you. Or think about it tonight when you're laying in bed. If you're trading the market now, do you have a strategy? If so, what is it? Could you define it in one sentence? Could you define it to me if I grilled you on the phone? Would you be able to define it? Would it make any sense? Is there any common sense method to what you're doing now in the market? If you are losing and not making money, you may not have a strategy at all, or you may have one that simply doesn't work, and it really doesn't have any common sense to it. The idea of trading with big money, with hedge funds and banks, makes a heck of a lot of sense. So think about that. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Online Trader Essential, for having me. Have a great night, everyone. Enjoy this beautiful evening. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs>